bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. Hey, folks, check it out. So we're here. At Drew Barner Campground. That's about seven miles out of Georgetown, which is famous for the Jeeper Jamboree and the Jeep Jamboree. They're two different things. One's a national event, one's a local event. They're all done on the Rubicon Trail, and it's totally uh, insane. Serious Jeeper action. Anyway, so where I'm at a camp here, um, this is the first time I've had this trailer out. This is a Turtleback Expedition trailer. It's a freaking amazing trailer. And uh, as you can see, I've got this incredible kitchen. And uh, so one time on Instagram, the people who made this trailer for me said to everybody, what would be the first dish you made if you had this trailer? I said it would be my seared salmon with grilled asparagus, mashed potatoes, and pesto. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. It should turn out really good, but it's my first time on this kitchen, so we'll find out. Now here's what's, we're going we're gonna to do a two-fold thing here. So I've got of these red potatoes one russet potato because i want to have this nice waxy element that gives it a really smooth uh really smooth potatoes and then this really flavorful russet potato on it kick it as well what i'm also going to do you all seen these on tv i'm going to try this thing out this is this uh granite stone pan we'll check it out i normally use cast iron uh but i thought it'd be fun to try this thing out beat it against a couple rocks right find out if it's really as good as they say it is we're going to check it out so once i can get it out of this plastic uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna win. Just like that. So we'll get on with it in just a moment. Okay. Alright, so now I'm gonna cut these potatoes up. I already um, peeled them up real nice, so uh, I'm gonna cut them and. Nice little. Good God, man. There we go. I got the biggest cutting board on the planet right now. It came with the trailer, so it's awesome. Yeah, there should be uniform cuts. Sometimes they don't make it that way. It's no big deal. Don't have a heart attack over it. Just keep going. So the pesto I'm going to make later. Walnut pesto. Stinking bugs. It's going to be great. I'm going to toast some of these walnuts up in that little pan I showed you earlier. It's going to be amazing. So, get some water in these bad boys to get them fired up. Ooh, that water's already boiling hot. Holy smokes. Actually, I'm going to show you all a little trick right now. So we're just putting these potatoes in here. It's got this water all starchy. So I'm going to dump this starchy water out. And I'm not making pasta. I want potato flavor. Nice, good, fresh potato flavor. So we add nice, fresh water in there again. Hot water. While that's doing that, get some grill going. Yeah, 10,000 BTU, baby. <laughs> Boom. Potatoes are on. Next, I'll get the salmon lined up, get the pesto rocking, asparagus on the grill. Actually, I'm not going to grill them. I'm just going to do a sear them in the pan. It's going to be delicious. 
Okay, so one of the things I can do ahead of time that's going to make things easier when I get ready to make the pesto is to toast the walnuts, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And we'll get the grill going here. This going to go in here. Well, there you go. Oh, okay. About like so. Get this fancy granite pan on there. All right. Now, the thing is, when you're toasting, like, you know, um, spices or nuts and things like that, you really got to stay on point with it because they will burn on you in a heartbeat. So you really, you, know, there's, you can't walk away from it. You got you to be on it. That's probably going to be more than enough. I'll eat them. One of the important things when you're cooking too is to have a nice frosty beverage but not too many so you know give them a good stir these bad boys. Check the potatoes. Alright, let's see here. Oh. This stove. This stove is very impressive. Man, it's woo, it's hot. Little ways more. Little ways more to go. Whoop, whoop. That's for the squirrels. Um, so, yeah, I'll give this a real quick rough chop. Get that ready to go. And, and uh, so I was talking about the 2,000 uh, watt, the 2,000 watt inverter I have in there. It gives me the ability to bring a little bullet out here, you know, a bullet, little bullet blender. So, uh, wow, you know, that's going to make things easy. But not to say that you couldn't do this if you had a mortar and pestle the manual way, you know. And it's not a hard thing to do. Those things will uh, make pesto in a heartbeat. And uh, I will be doing that in the future. So um, stay tuned and, uh, and check out the shows when I uh, interviews and that and explain a little more about that in detail. Um, so pesto, what are we doing? We're putting in basil, olive oil, really good, robust olive oil. And you know, I'm not measuring any of this stuff. Why? Because I'm doing it by eye, man. You just know. I don't know where my Parmesan cheese is. Okay. We got this frenetically sealed Parmesan, ready Parmesan cheese. All right, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to put a little Parmesan in there. Wait, wait, let me get a... Utensil. So, really about three tablespoons, quarter cup, yeah? Now, a little bit more, because, hey, why not? It's organic Parmesan, too, which is killer. So, uh, in my infinite wisdom, I forgot to bring a zester out here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my peeler, peel off a couple pieces. Don't go too deep. You don't want the pith. You just want, see how it's just, just the skin of the lemon? You just want some of that in there, right? Now, every, not everybody does lemon in their pesto, but I like it because it adds a lot of freshness, right? You don't want that. Look at that big old chunk of no. Bye-bye. Just a few pieces like that. It's going to make the yum-yum happen, Okay. Going a little more olive oil because I'm feeling it. And I'm going to add more olive oil. I can feel that too. Now I got these notes I, these notes, these nuts I toasted. Yum. Walnuts. Oh my gosh. Who doesn't love walnuts? Easy, killer. Easy, killer. 
All right, now. Mm-hmm. Okay, look here. Boom. Upside down in the magic bullet. And guess what? I have a magic power cord plug it into over here. Coming out of the earth. Oh, there we go. Okay. Don't try that at home. Everybody just heard all of that. <laughs> like, what in the hell is going on up there? done. Pistol's done. Potatoes are ready to mash. Lights, camera action. We're good to go. Be back in a minute. All right, so uh, I have a nice cast iron pan that's piping hot. I actually have to let it cool down a little bit because it got overly, overly hot. And then uh, right here I've got this granite ware. <laughs> a little olive oil in there. Oh look, my kitchen's not level. That's awesome. So, uh, <clears throat> Fresh, delicious asparagus. We're gonna do about one, two. Let's see what I get right there. Four, perfect. Four and four. That's where I want. Oh wait, I gotta cut these bad boys down. back in the bag here. You got the two the salmon. Coho, fresh caught. I don't like farm raised. It's just funky. I don't even know where it all came from. Nah, ain't doing it. So I had the I have the uh got the meat counter. Trim this up real nice for me and get the skin off of it. If you see this brown stuff, it's going to make it, you want to try and get as little of that as possible because that's kind of where the fat is, right? And that's what's going to make your fish taste fun because that fat's going to make that fishy flavor that everybody doesn't like. Um, but, oh yeah, that's cool. Little olive oil in the pan. Oh, I'm getting a little hangry over there. Man. 
muito. Ih, o que é isso? Settle down. Settle down. Everybody play nice over here. Oh, goodness. That's gonna be yummy. Holy oh, smoke. You kidding me? Look at that. Cast iron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Cast iron transfer sheet right to your hand. But for me, my hand is like a kitchen glove, so I'm good to go. Put these bad boys back in there. Oh, yeah, this is bad. Cast iron sheet, come on, baby, come on. There we go. There we go. Pepper action right at the last minute. We don't want to put it on right now because it'll burn. But I want to point something out to you, you guys, is um, the biggest thing about like any kind of protein, when you put it in the pan, is to leave it alone, because if you start messing with it, it's going to stick, it's going to tear up, it's going to be a mess. And look at it, so you, you grab it, you feel a little bit, it's not going to want to move, just don't mess with it, because if you start doing anything with it, it's, it's going to tear apart and be a joke. Just let it be. Let it be. So it's going to get to where it needs to be, it's going to separate clean and simple, Drop that pan, no problem. These guys over here look a little good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. So when it does come time, whoop, done. You, know, you don't always want to use a tongs on sand like this, especially when you cast iron. You know, a treated pan like this, it's going to separate easier, but in cast iron, it could be a big problem. All right, so we're at the point now that you see it's starting to get a little cake up the side there. You see how it's starting to get white kind of up the side? Then you know it's time to flip that bit, whether it wants to or not. And look at that great separation perfect here. Beautiful. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-oh, this one's getting a little stupid on me. Boom! Still going to see the fish, all right? Finish it up real quick right here. And I tell you what, at this, at this point, I think you can almost turn this heat off. Because that cast iron is going to carry that heat through and you're going to get a nice piece of medium fish. Not like, not overcooked, but not raw in the middle. It's going to be just right. Flaky and delicious. And that's the big, that's the big trick. Now right here is also where you're not going to burn the pepper, you can give a little pepper to it. Okay. I already took the asparagus off the fire because it was getting perfect, so we got that ready to go. There we go. Let's soak in some of those delicious, oh my gosh. That so good. All right. We're getting close to plating people. We're going to have a yummy meal right here in a minute. Okay, so we are going to plate this up. We're going to take four asparagus on each plate, like so. It's all pretty, right? Some babies like so. Just beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Okay. And then we're taking the salmon and we're going to go across them like this. Like this. Okay. And then we're going to take a 
mashed potatoes. You see, I put these mashed potatoes in a Ziploc bag. I cut the end of it off. Now I'm going to pipe it just like it's frosting. Just like it's frosting on top of this bad boy. Pesto I made earlier. Right across like that. This, my folks, is one of my favorite dishes. Pesto salmon, mashed potatoes, and grilled asparagus. Dig in. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful